Hey guys, Mike here. So I'm going to show you how we pour and finish this 24 foot by 24 foot pool patio slab. And what this is, this is part of a project where we're pouring about a 3,000 square foot concrete patio around this guy's pool. And this slab just leads from his from his pool house right there on the right you can see over to the pool area and I'm gonna show you make sure you stay tuned for the end of the video I'm gonna show you how we finish this thing so it's gonna have more than just a regular room finish on it so what we're doing is we you know we came in we formed this up we got a matter rebar in it it's got a couple little trench drains in it I don't know if you can see right there to the right of Abbey there's a little trench drain right there and then over by the concrete truck, there's another small trench drain. So the slab kind of pitches in a couple different directions towards these trench drains. You can see right there where Luke is pulling that concrete around. There's about a six foot trench drain right there. So there's going to be a high point in the middle. And then it's going to slope from the pool house to the drain. And then from the pool area to the drain. So we're using a uh, regular 4,000 psi mix with this. We got fiber mesh in it also, and it's more of a pea stone, more of a 3/8 stone on this mix, just to make it a little easier to work with when we go to finish it. And uh, you can see Darren's got the grade stick there. He's checking some grades, making sure we got it at about the right height. We want to make sure that the center pad we make is higher than the trench drain so there's no puddles in this thing nothing worse than having a drain that the water doesn't run to so we got Eric working here today I'm not here today I'm on actually on vacation on this one so you know the guys Darren Luke and then you got Abby over there and Eric they're kind of taking care of this for me while I'm on vacation so that's pretty cool for them to be able to do that um, I guess that's what owning your own business is supposed to be like right when you have a good crew who else out there has a real good crew you know and you, you can actually take off you don't have to be there for pouring and finishing your crew's good enough to do it without you let me know down there in the comments and how many of you guys that own businesses are having a hard time finding you know another really good helper someone that can really work I mean is it hard to find guys I'm kind of lucky. I've got a I've got a good crew. I don't really have to find people. They've been with me for a long, long time, so that helps a lot. I I would think. That's the owner there in the background over there to the right. He owns this place. He he owns a big business too. He's got he's got a lot of employees that work for him. So we're getting most of this poured out. This is just going to take one truckload. So we'll get about three quarters of it dumped out and then we'll start to screed it and guys we got some bricks under the rebar and the guys are kind of pulling it up too as they go to make sure it stays up off the ground and then uh, you know they're just being careful not to step on it again Again, we're going to do a little bit more than a broom finish on this, so make sure you hang out to the end of the video. The whole pool deck is going to be like this. All, I think it ended up being like 3,300 square feet total when we finish this. I'll have the rest of that pour and finish on the pool deck coming up in a, in a later video. But I just wanted to show you this, this basic pool patio slab because I know a lot of you out there are asking how to pour patios and how to pour your own slabs and I mean the basics are all the same you got to dump out the concrete you rake it around you try to get it you can see Eric right there now setting that center pad making sure that it's right at the perfect height it's probably going to be he's probably setting that at the same height as the pool house slab so that it'll have a level area right across the center and then it'll pitch from one drain and then down to the other drain but I know a lot of you guys have been asking about how to pour slabs and you know the basics are the same you pour out the concrete as much as you dare to depending on how experienced you are you rake it around as get it as level as you can by rake raking it around shoot your grades mag your edges and then strike your pads whether you use a wet pad like we do or whether you use grade stakes or a screed rail you know you got to have something to screed off from 
And then you just get your concrete screeded to whatever level you're going to. And then you bolt float it. So, I mean, the basics are pretty much the same. I do have, you know, down in the details of the video, the description, I got a course about how to pour concrete slabs. It'll teach you all this stuff, guys. So there's forming in there. There's the pouring, the finishing, you know, even even the power trial. And if you like, you're doing a garage slab or something. But everything you'd need to know would be in that course. So Darren and Luke now, they're grabbing on the straight edge. And this is what we do. We kick screed stuff. So that's probably about a 10 or 12 foot straight edge there. And they're, now they're going to turn it and come up the other way. This is probably one of the more, most important parts of doing the slab is getting it screeded, you know, without having any humps or dips or puddles. You know, you really need to know what you're doing when you're doing this part. You can see Darren, his pad there, he was getting a little excess over there on his pad. So he wanted to make sure it was perfect. So he's just magging it off and making sure there's no hump there or no dip and everything's gonna slope to that drain just like it's supposed to so he's pretty fussy about that that way there and then they'll finish that one half so right now over on where Luke is straight edging is that other trench drain you can just barely see it in this shot right here So they got half of it screeded. Now they're going to screed that one last bay and then they'll finish dumping out a little bit more concrete. Now they got about a 14 foot straight edge there. You can see Darren puts the end of the screed right about in the center of that drain. And he's actually screeding uphill a little bit. So that might have been probably an inch and a half slope. He's screeding up to that high point and then it's going to go back down to that other trench drain. You can see we got Abby right in there puddling with Eric. She's a good puddler. She knows what she's doing. She's not afraid of raking around some concrete. So they're gonna finish off that bay, like I said. And you know, let me down, know down in the comments if you've got any questions about just what they're doing and how they're sloping that with these trench drains. And you know, how many of you other guys do pool patios where you do it around drains or do you just slope it away from the pool? Let me know. Most of the ones we do, we just slope it away from the pool. There's not many pool decks we have to do where we got to install a trench drain. Eric's getting a bull float on it. You guys see he's right there by my laser. A lot of you guys have asked about that laser too. That's that's the Topcon RL H5B. It's a self-leveling laser. So you just set it on the, the tripod, hit the on button, and it self-levels. And then you can just use the receiver to set your grades with. I've got other videos about how to use that, but that's down in the description too, guys. All these tools, if you want to check them out, they're down there. You can get a lot of them right on Amazon too. So that's what a lot of those links will bring you to. All in all, this pour from start to finish took these guys about, you know, 30 to 40 minutes to get this poured out, screeded and bowl floated. And then, uh, you know, then they had to wait around a little bit before they started finishing it. But the finishing part's coming up pretty soon, so. Let me know if you guys guess down in the comments what we're going to do to this. And for those of you guys that don't know, you know, whenever you have a little left on that concrete truck, they don't make you just dump it out. They'll bring it back to the concrete plant. They'll, they usually make blocks with it if they have enough. And if they don't have enough, they dump it in a big pile. And that usually gets crushed in the you know concrete aggregate they can use for backfill for something so they don't just waste it but you don't have to dump it in a pile then have to deal with it at least we don't you can see those guys are finished magging that edge we got that last bay to get bull floated 
and then I'm going to show you guys how we start finishing this. We don't use too many tools when we pour something, you know, we got we got a straight edge, a screed, we got those concrete rakes, we got a bull float, and we got the laser. And then other than your hand tools, you know, your mag and your boots, that's about all the tools you need to get your concrete poured most of the time. Most of the concrete drivers that we have too, these guys usually let us wash our tools up first before they wash the chutes. And then they can just go, you know, wherever they need to go and wash up and they don't have to deal with us coming walking around later to wash the tools. That makes it nice because in the summer the concrete dries on the tools really fast and it's nice to get it right off of there. Alright, so Luke's starting the finishing process. He's going around there with an edger, making sure all the edges are nice, have a nice little rounded edge to them. He's doing that curve part first. Now Darren's jumping on there with the skids. He's got a Darby in his right hand and a regular mag in his left hand, and he's going to just float the surface. He's going to taper, make sure that drain's cut down nice, make sure all the, there's no high concrete around it. And then he's going to float the entire surface out and make sure there's no imperfections, no bull float lines. Everything's filled in really nice for the finish. You guys guessed what the finish is yet? I can kind of see it. You can kind of see what we're going to do. You get something over there on the right. Yeah, so Luke's starting the finish yet. Yeah, it's a stamp finish with just texture mats. So that's got like a, a stone texture under those mats. Those mats are pretty big. They're about five by five. And he's throwing on the powder release and just texture in the surface. And then we're going to saw some cuts in this and wash it and seal it all later on. That'll be on a different video. It won't be on this one. But I wanted to show you guys what we're going to do to finish this entire pool deck. All 3,000 plus square feet is going to be finished like this. That thing on the right by the pool there sticking up with the yellow around it that's a that's a big hot tub in case you guys were wondering what that is so he's got a hot tub in there the pool has its own jets in it it's a big like kidney shaped kind of pool this was a really cool project I don't know if you can notice but Luke as he's stamping over there he's got these special kind of flat shoes on he put on over his sneakers that those uh, texture mats, they're not very thick. So if you just try to walk on them with your shoes, sometimes you could push in with your heel and leave a little, a little indent or a divot or a footprint. So we, we wear these special rubber shoes. They're really flat soled and they're a little bit wider than your shoes when we use those texture mats and then we don't have any footprints. You can see Luke's moving right along by himself. He can you can go pretty fast with those if you know what you're doing. And then the both of them guys together, they're pretty fast. They're gonna be They're gonna be getting around that trench drain right now. Darren's kind of rolling around it. Putting out the rest of the release agent, and then they're gonna work their way back across into that shade. See there's a little bit of shade there. So Luke started in the sun where it was drying the quickest and then they worked their way and get all the sun done and then back through the shade where it's a little bit softer. Two guys that know what they're doing. They can move, you can move along pretty fast when there's three people actually out there stamping. Maybe with another texture mat or two. You can cover a lot of area with these so you know, this is between, this is about 550 to 575 square feet here. That's out in the sun. That's a pretty good little size for just two guys, you know, especially if it's 80, 90 degrees and windy. You're not going to want to bite off too much. But with three guys, you know, you could go up to 800 to 1,000 square feet if you really know what you're doing, if you're experienced, and, and you should be just fine. If you don't, you know, if you're new to stamping, 
I do have a stamp course down there, too, guys, in the in the description of the video that teaches you all the basics. But if you if you're new to stamping, you're not going to want to start with something very big. You know, I would I would even practice on something small first. Build yourself something right at your house, five by five, five by ten, whatever, something small. Order some concrete or just use a bag mix and just practice a little bit before you go start and doing something anything larger than that. So when they get done, you know, they'll end up having to wash all those stamps. We usually have a pressure washer there. We use some Dawn dish detergent and some water. And we pressure wash them nice and clean after every job and then load them back in the truck. And then the process after this, I'll have a link at the end of this video to another video that will show you what happens after this process where we come back the next day, we'll saw our expansion joints, and we'll wash all that powder release off and clean it. And then we come back a day after that and put the sealer on it. So I have all that stuff in some of my other videos. So I didn't put it in this one for you guys, but I'll have a link. You can go check that out if you want. You can see they're hauling all the stamps over to the edge. They got the pressure washer there. So, hey guys, if you like this video, go down, hit like. If you haven't subscribed yet, you know, please hit that subscribe button. I come out with a couple videos a week. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.